Hey, Scotty. We hear it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Scott. Hi, Scott. I really wanted to uh, have a chance to wish you a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Scott. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I think it's really important when uh, someone like you goes over the edge here uh, that you have all the possible support you can get from everybody you know. such a great role model. Uh, you are pretty much the perfect example of what it means to be a good person and you demonstrate love and honesty and compassion every day. Uh, it's extremely comforting knowing that you're always in my corner and now that I'm older I realize that others aren't always as lucky. A, your one-liners that are so of course, dry I can't and witty. help but say the reason I love you so much is you make my best friend so very very happy but you yourself are an amazing person. And uh, B, you. your cooking, um, like the grilled pancakes, may be the greatest things in my life, along with all the amazing like fish dips and fish that you make, so high five. This big, burly, um, macho man, but you don't act like one. You're so fun to have around. You're so generous, like you've actually taught everybody in your life, and he's grown up around you how to be generous in the world and how to do things that are selfless and loving and caring. And it's been such a opportunity for me to understand what that looks like. And, you know, people really just can't thank you enough for it. See, the most important thing and the thing I love most about you is how much you love uh, this family and how happy you make everyone, uh, whether it's Susan, or your four kids, you are just so loving and generous uh, with that love. You are and such a great teacher. Every time we get together, I just learn a lot. Um, the best part is that what I'm, what I'm learning is always really useful. You never teach me about just some random obscure trivia or anything like that. It's always just things that are useful and that I can actually use in my life. And you really teach how to get things done. It's so natural, I'm not sure you're always aware of it, but it just is obvious that it comes as second nature to you. I think that it has to be his selflessness. I think that Scott just does so much for so many people, and he does it without asking for anything in return. And I really admire that and respect it, and have always found that to be Scott's greatest quality. Um, he has done so many things for Matt and I, um, and he's done so many things for me over the years, even when I was a horrible teenager. My love for Scott is not singular. It's got that enviable combination of wisdom and patience that the best teachers have. Um, you know, when you're learning with Scott, he gives you the space to fuck up and make mistakes, but then will come back with a smile on his face and help you get the pieces back together. You're smart and you're fun and you're creative and you're a wonderful companion you show me new things you often cheer me up you often make me laugh and you can be serious with me and go deep and you're a terrific person a great brother-in-law i'm proud to have you as a brother-in-law so much about everything that it's really exciting and fun to be around you um, for that reason you just have a natural curiosity and knowledge about um, so many things and I, I don't know of anybody happen. else who every time I spend time with you it's a great experience mm -hmm. it's something that we remember for a long long time your, so. um, commitment to people and I think that was has been really well exemplified by the years that you spent um, working with your students at the Carroll School and then leveraging that experience at the Carroll School you're forever the teacher you've got so many things to teach you spend so much of your time and your generosity teaching us, whether it's fishing or harmonica or um, blacksmithing or tree cutting or training of dogs, uh, and most importantly, volleyball uh, up at camp. In everything you do, uh, uh, you have a really a real uh, craftsman and a real hard worker. 
Uh, that shows up in all the planning you did for the scouts. It shows up uh, in the main forge project. It shows up in your Total career. Sweet, sweet guy. Um, <clears throat> I felt like he really just came into this family and, and especially your family um, and was a kind, gentle role model for uh, Jenna and Taz and um, a sweet, loving, present partner for Susie. Now, you're always thinking of others, um, you know, perhaps more than any, anyone I know, and, and it's a very rare quality, and I guess it just reflects wonderfully about you uh, and your family and um, about everyone that loves you. And red truck and we listened to music um, and we just got to catch up and know get to know each other and um, I will never forget I asked you like what that little thing was on the side of the road that had the bumps and you just drove right over it it was the rumble strip and you told me all about what the rumble strip was and you know to this day every time I see a rumble strip I think of our drive and um, that you taught me that little nugget of information so it's something I'll never forget and I go visit him <laughs> what do you do when you go visit anything you remember anything <laughs> how about going fishing into the beach and all that stuff the right beach. Yeah. Yeah. the beach yeah. one of my favorite memories is we were going to a concert and uh, it was cry it was traffic was bad and there was an accident someone uh, was injured on the side of the road and you raced out immediately to help and I'm like wow you know that's something you know and then uh, Susie informed me that you had had training uh, medical training and helping uh, in emergency situations and uh, <laughs> and uh, you're of great comfort to that woman and I'm uh, you know and I'm you know you're such a renaissance person all the various skills and interests, it doesn't surprise me that you're also an EMT. I'm listening to some really cool conspiracy theories. Hiking across the Pyrenees, uh, going up our advanced trip to the Allagash to uh, uh, case things out and having a spaghetti dinner together before the whole troops arrived from Lincoln. Uh, I remember cutting up that uh, old uh, dead raccoon on the dining room table. The, uh, and we came home from China at, I don't know, maybe two, three in the morning and Scott had driven all the way down from Massachusetts to meet uh, Susan and all of us at the airport um, in the middle of the night. So that was amazing. Um, person, uh, through some very tender, affectionate words from our dear friend Susie, when she spoke of your kindness and compassion and very big heart. And then when I met you, in Lexington, it all was so very true. When we come up to see you guys and we just hang out and jam. I first met you in 1947 in Roswell, New Mexico, when we were investigating the conspiracy about the Martian landing. Oh no, we weren't even born yet. Playing in your forge uh, and hammering out all our frustrations, making some wonderful things for our wood stove. Uh, oh yeah, it must have been over the Paul McCartney conspiracy of whether uh, Paul McCartney is really a, uh, not him, but a uh, his lookalike. Oh no, maybe that's not right. I don't you provided Hannah and I with very unique experiences that made our childhood very memorable. And uh, from teaching us how to fish and camp to hosting any ball games in the backyard, you always tried to give us the best of everything, even when times were tough, and ensure that we had everything that we needed for a happy and successful life. I don't know when I met you, Scotty, but in any case, um, we love you very much, and um, you're just one of the most generous and kind persons that we know. One of my favorite memories is when he yelled at me for the first time after I screamed at my mom and slammed my bedroom door in my face. Uh, not in an effort to parent or discipline me, but just to, de just to defend and protect uh, the woman that you love. We spent the day together pulling up lobster traps and you really showed us the ropes and made sure that a couple of rookies um, both learned what they were doing and didn't get themselves killed. Coming to Maine uh, for a conference and coming home um, on the day of the conference, or maybe it was the night before, I can't even remember, but it was just this gorgeous 
dinner with drinks and shellfish and steamed clams and lobster and music yeah you know it was just you just showed up this weekend um with the most beautiful curtain rods for my nursery um and you know i was hesitant to ask because i never like asking too much out of anyone but he never makes it never makes it feel like you're asking him too much and he always seems happy to do it and it's just such a special addition to my house and my new family and um i'm so incredibly grateful for that i had to mount um, a new television set for my parents at victoria muse assisted living in new jersey their new home scott got out his box of tools and did the job perfectly while phil and i did our best to help out i remember being a little envious and also admiring Scott's ability to work with his hands and get the job done. Last year, Christmas in Maine, um, over the holidays, um, I, you welcomed me into your home um, in Brunswick. Um, you hung out with me, taught me how to blacksmith, um, made some delicious food, and you know, it was just a joy getting to laugh with you and hang out with you over the holidays. There are two memories I hold the dearest. Uh, the time we spent building his forge together in Maine a few summers ago. You know, driving around the uh, driving the lumber yard with the windows down, discussing uh, you know lyrics of Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters and the beauty of the blues uh, and the strength of music that comes from just down and out hard times. Pond hockey with Scott and just the enthusiasm with which he got all of us kids out on the ice, like clearing off all the snow and getting everybody ready and the gear and just like having so much excitement. Um, to play and to screw around and you know some of us weren't that great but it was so fun. We were Enough. at the market and we were lucky enough to meet one of your heroes Bernie Sanders. I myself was starstruck at first but it was also just awesome watching you see him. Uh, you could tell that you could barely handle it. He, you uh, couldn't stop looking at the pictures on your phone and the rest of the day you were talking to everybody on Facebook and uh, talking to everyone you know, uh, you just had to tell everyone about it. I could really see how happy you were and you couldn't contain it at all. So I'm glad that you get to meet one of your heroes. You Fast definitely deserve it. Last and... summer, uh, when I was helping Alana move into her apartment, packing and transporting furniture, building her new space, I found myself leading the charge. You know, I stepped up and carried more than my own weight uh, and I knew how to do things and to think first about the best way to do it. And I finally felt like someone that others could depend on. And it was one of the first times I truly felt like a man capable of providing for the people I love. And I learned that all from Scott, watching him and working alongside him for all these years. One of my great memories from Lincoln was that wintry day that you and I went over to the, the barn and did some blacksmithing. And you taught me the ABCs of blacksmithing. And I remember we had to be so close to the, the forge to keep our fingers, at least my fingers and toes, uh, from, you know, kind of crisping up in the, in the cold. I had a work meeting, and I got out around 11.30. I was there. I was in Maine for a conference. And I text Matt to find out where he and Scott are. And he says, Maine Brewing Company. So at 11.30... In the morning, that is. I drive to Maine Brewing Company and find my husband and my Uncle Scott pretty well toasted at 11.30 in the morning. <laughs> and it was hilarious. I'm glad that I picked them up. And um, I just was so happy that, you know, Scott... He didn't, he barely knew Matt at the time and they were just having a great time together and Scotty just said no problem and took him out and showed him a great time and is always trying to convince us to move to Maine and hopefully one day that'll pay off. But it just sticks with me as a hilarious sight to see of two grown men 
probably have just tasted about 30 beers at 11 in the morning. I think it was like a Tuesday. All the so, that we used to have together back in Lexington in particular, um, when Rich would be on the road and we would be, I'd run over to your house and you'd make me some delicious seafood dinner and we'd have a few glasses of wine and I'll get laughing and telling stories, you, me, and Susan. And, and I just had, it really made my week a lot. Special things that you uh, do with us and teach us and help us and, you know, all that stuff. Amen. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>so grateful to know you and i you know wish you the happiest of birthdays happy happy 60th here we are together i'm very very grateful and i love you happy birthday i really want to wish you uh, the very best uh, as you go into this uh, new adventure and happy it is an adventure 60th birthday and we love you scott we love you bye scott on there Happy birthday, Scott. Happy birthday, Scott. I couldn't have asked for a better father, and I am so proud that you're mine. So, happy birthday, Dad. Love you. Thank you for always making me feel part of the family. So, happy birthday, Everybody, Scott. Everybody, pick him up. Okay. Got him? One, two, three. Happy and that's him. Happy birthday, Scott. Happy birthday, Scott. Happy birthday. We, we love, love you. you. Have a great birthday. something like this. Stop eating birthday cake and come and help me play this thing.